Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Tierno, the last of of Europe. Of course, my favorite mod, or at least one of them. Old Blues is pretty much up there, too. But we got to talk about for the war, a support for the war plummets. The German Volk have grown restless over the war in Switzerland, even though the war's already over. Um, right? Yeah, it's over. After the Big Daddy's many remarks to the public about the Swiss war being one that would be swift and painless, a demonstration of Germany's greatness to the world, it is shown to be but an embarrassment. Not quite. The Swiss meat grinders taking far too many lives, or German lives, than what should have been necessary. And lo and now have the people caught wind of how terribly the war is going, with many soldiers now turning to desertion rather than face the constant artillery bombardments and engage in what seems to be suicidal assaults on Swiss fortresses. A majority of officers and military police have found it much more difficult to keep their troops in line. Something has gone terribly wrong in this war, something that many have now just come to realize. The Oval Commando de Wehrmacht have expressed great concerns over how truly sustainable this war is and, how, and are demanding that this conflict end sooner rather than later, a sentiment also seen through the general public. At this point, any plan to truly and swiftly end this war is considered a good thing. Darn it, why won't those dudes break? Hmm. Not under understanding why that fired, but... You know, oh well. It is what it is. And we have four carriers, which is pretty nice, and we kept the subs there too for now. Uh, but right now we're going to war with General Go the government de Krim. So I did. I thought, okay, so the focus tree last time. We're recognizing danger <clears throat> because we can. I thought this was glitch. Oh, I thought de Krim. I thought for some reason I thought that was Wales, or not Wales, but uh, the government Cornwall. That's what it was. But it's not obviously. So we're going to do recognizing danger. So I did this one last time. We do this again. Please go ahead, which help our weekly manpower. As well as south or my military migration, as well as integration, because I want to integrate them. But also teach them a lesson, too. Their time has come. The fleets are armed and ready. Our rockets are primed and fueled, and our helicopters even now spin their rotors and warm up in anticipation. Our soldiers across the Reich stand at attention, ready to plunge into the mountains and fjords in Norway. The plan is simple. Has been drilled into the mind of every soldier's head. We'll land on the top of their positions, silence their guns, and shatter any defense the puny traitors can muster. A quick swoop is not only planned and expected, but demanded. We'll take the lightning invasion of 1940 and make it seem laughable in the face of our own strike. Truly, the Norwegians will once again learn to fear us, and the world will look in awe upon the new, German, new Germany's might. But we're doing fine here. No issues to speak of. Um, as should be expected by the greatest military in the world, should it not? Ah, very good. Split up. Very good, very good, very good. And we want to go to the 9th of November stat. That's fine with us. Alright, so what do we got here? I mean, eventually we're going to need everybody, so... Even the Vatican. I'm not sure that's really worth doing that one, but whatever. There you go. Yep. Nope. And we're still working on all this stuff, even though the economy's kind of hitting the pooper still. We have a slight yearly supplies, even though the debt-to-GDP ratio's going up. As we're trying to curb inflation. We're not looking real good for us right now. Oh! I'm going to war. Oh, and we want to... Oh, so these guys are actually doing okay for now. They're going to do well. But the Grand Admiral. Dennis was brought before Goring. In his private office, escorted by a dozen men, the once most influential figure of the German Kriegsmarine stood before the uh, leader. Hermann looked the man over. This was the first time he'd seen him out of uniform. Still, Dunitz was dressed sharply. His suit was pressed and crisp, but it wouldn't matter for the military trial. Both men knew that within the week, Dunitz would be dead or rotting for life in his cell, but the stubborn man still looked upon the big daddy definitely. Or defiantly. Or definitely. Hermann gestured to his men. Pointing at the door, one of the attaches, a corporal, was about to protest when his superior grabbed his shoulder, motioning to the door. Dunitz was unarmed, and... The Führer had a Luga in plain sight on the desk. He was no no danger. The men left, leaving the two alone. Finally, Goran broke the silence. Today's your big day, Admiral. The Reich you've spoken with, uh, with con uh, com competent. Oh. Com competent. Enjoy your freedom while it lasts, Dunis finally spoke. Enjoy your reign while it lasts. You're nothing but a puppet. Though you already know that already. His words were calm, as if he was having a normal conversation with a subordinate. Not the fear of the Reich. Goring's face darkened. Drop the act, Dunis. You've lost. Your career's over and your time in a cell is nearly... At its end, or your time not in cell. I've accepted my fate, Dunnett shot back. It's been over for me since you've won. My only regret is that your victory has spelled the ruin for a country. Dunnett sighed, falling, showing emotion. You've always been a bit of a buffoon. You've lost and you don't even know it yet. Koring has had enough. Who do you think you are, you degenerate traitor? It's men like you who brought our nation to its knees, and men like you that hold it back. I'll make Germany the greatest nation on earth, and you'll be alive to see it. This, I swear. For Germany's sake, I hope you're right. Cool. And the entire German Navy is only 10 ships. Not great. Because I might have deleted it by accident, but, ah, whatever. Happens, you know? Still looting these guys. Oh, Armenia, GRWI, pretty good. Eastern Builder, don't need that, don't need that, don't need that. Cool, Armenia. I hardly know her. 
Ah. Very nice and happy March. We do have a cup of decaf coffee here to everyone. So if I slur my words because I'm extraordinarily exhausted like normal, and I can't sleep, or at least I want to try to sleep at night. Ah. We're still giving Finland some more time, but we do want to go to war with Norway, like I said. Um, that's good to get rid of that. Let's go on integration. It decreases the loyalty of the militaries, but decreases their power. Extra effort shall be put into integrating the Swiss people into the Reich. So we get 90,000 every month. I used to fall off over the German economy. Swiss resistance. We lose political power, weekly manpower. Ooh. Weekly stability. That's not good, too. That's actually really bad. Oh. Let's call everybody in. Thank you. I have a feeling they're going to come in no matter what. 68. Looking good. Looking very, very good. Had a time, had a time, had a time. Uh, Next one, two, why not? Maybe we should have had him do that. But the Japanese folly. Oh. Look at theirs. French state sends support. Open stands with Armenia. And eh, no one cares. And you guys are good to go too. That's awesome. My god, how much more do you need to repair? Caucasine? Nice. Three days. Oh, they're almost done. Cool. Good job, guys. You need to integrate them. Republic of Turkey's looking a little thick. Not too thick, just thick enough. Uh, who do we attack next? I guess it could be Finland. I mean, I want to send them up here instead of anywhere else, but, you know, whatever. Well, they're still winning. Or they're still at least alive. Integration's good, though. Let's go and do this one next. Oh. Hey, our score's highest. Oh, America's really losing a lot. Their victories are negative 1,050. Jesus Christ. Sucks to be them. What the heck else is still repairing? Come on, you Deutschland clash. Oh, that was fast. A week left, huh? Nationalists? That's what we would have wanted. Well, how's the economy now? Okay, this is worse, better, worse, still. Hmm. Um, loot the Balkans. All right, we could do that. Yeah, why not? Sounds good to me. Way too ahead of time. Railway guns. Sure. Oh my God. There you go. Fine, I think. Thank God. Finland is doing really freaking well. What's wrong? Oh, they're still fighting these guys. Oh, they're fighting these guys too at the same time? Oh, that's really bad for them. After that, we're gonna read, give, offer them a choice. Eh, I wanna wait till the, I wanna see them finish the war first. Uh, I read this one last time too. I think as well as the Gateway to the Balkans, perhaps? Yeah, I read this one as well. Open system Norway. Russian Liberation Army breaks away. Information has reached your mind from the east. Beyond the conclusion lines, other Reich's commissariats. Friend of the Russian Liberation Army, ROA. Uh, un un al until now, a collaborator of ours based in the city of Samara has decided that it is no longer the best interest to be associated with us. Subsequently, they have announced the immediate cessation, or cessation, cessation of any and all reliable interactions, relations, or contact of any kind between us. Um, and the Reich, of course, to anyone who will listen. The ROA, formerly under the leadership of Andrei Vlasov, proved itself valuable both during Operation Barbarossa and the West Russian War. And contact between the Reich and cliques within their military-led government have proven beneficial in the years since. Clearly, however, the internal politics balance has shifted towards a, factional un a faction unfriendly to our interests and non-receptive to our support. The announcements, both in general and in terms of response, has been given a low priority for, by both the foreign ministry and the OKW. The situation in Russia remains mostly unclear with a nominal political consolidation of various territories, including those from the ROA, significantly undermined by an administrative overextension and surge in efforts by escaped loyalists of defeated regimes or other internal tensions. Militarily, they're expected to pose no threat to Wehrmacht forces should a limited or escalated conflict begin in time, though. When the Reich recommences external operations, then no doubt efforts will be brought to heel once again, no matter the fall in, in line in time. How are we doing with our dockyards? Oh, infantry. Put back to tank. 
we could use more military factories in all honesty. We really could. Another fat tan, and then go up there too. No, honestly, we'll probably need more dockyards. And fuel, of course. Oh, uh, but happy April, everybody. Line up. Last month went by very fast. Oh, my goodness. Good. That's working out for us. Sure, why not? Oh, battleship. Nice. Very good. Oh, when you call these guys into war, that's right. Could really destroy our growth and raise war taxes too, but I don't think it will. Well, how is this going? 0.3. If we get a 1% uh, inflation reduction, that's ultimately worth it. Well, I mean, okay, at least that will make us break even, which is what we really, what, what I really wanted for us. At the very least, break even. New enemies. Oh, look at that. Our demonstration was perhaps a bit too thorough. More than ever, the Rex enemies send forces to resistance groups operating the Carpathian Highlands and the Danube border. We should make an example of those who would fund the destabilization of the Reich, and have an example that no one will ever forget. Who today, after all, remembers the Poles? Back in business. Oil is the backbone of the Reich, and our pans are fleets and Kriegsmarine. The Reich's technological superiority shall allow us to exploit the Romanian reserves to a degree the traders could have never envisioned, allowing us to fuel our warfare no matter what embargo set upon us by the cowards in Tokyo and Washington. After all, everyone needs it. Yeah, that'll be good to do. Ooh. Nice. Bargain. Uh. My god, they're doing so well. Why? They're still a good amount of, They're completely out of manpower. They must have grinded their manpower out of the way. If we can get all of them and this group already under us, that'd be fantastic. Like, holy crap. Occupation, of course, is very tiring work. Oh, my goodness. Um, let's do that one. And now, happy May! Stratocratic Nazism. Barbie's slowly getting worse, but don't worry about it. Those are all fake numbers. Beautiful. Very nice. Proving the might of the Kriegsmarine. That's too many carriers for that, but that's alright for now. We're gonna need all those jet fighters later, so I'm not gonna reduce what we're making there right now. Nice. Very nice. Two ahead of time. 69. Eight. Not quite 60, 1969 yet. Hmm. Back in business. Because we're completely out of fuel. Ukraine, Balkans, Scandinavia, Muscovine, and oh, repair the oil fields. Oh yes, that's still a fun to do. Expand extraction operations, more funding for the continental oil, improve extraction methods, all very good stuff. I'm start researching things a few years ahead of time. Whatever. I'm gonna wait till Norway's dead before we do that. Very good. Uh, 
Operation Peter Serbia and the Ravna Gora movement. just in case. There we go. Norway is ours. The conquest of Norway. Not long ago, when the Reich was in the chaos of the Civil War, the Norwegians betrayed the Reich and declared their so-called independence. Such a meaningless act was doomed to be vain, for our Nordic brothers can never protect themselves without the Reich's benevolent rule. The only problem is, it takes many of their bloods and lives to realize such an easy fact when the Wehrmacht returned to their land, and now their fates are on their hands once again. Obviously, the previous administration of Norway established in 1940 proved a total failure, for the Norwegians never truly acknowledged a regime as well as the Reich as their fatherland. Such a mistake cannot be repeated anymore. The newly established Reich's Commissar Skandinavien, Skandinavien, led by Heinz Jörg Lem, will ensure that Norway stays an inseparable part of the German Reich, of course, forever. Now, for the, now the Germanic nations are claimed by the Reich, and under the genius leadership of our big daddy. Soon we shall bring unity and glory to the whole Aryan race. This time, the swastika flag, which proudly flies in front of the Slottet, Will never fall again. Welcome back, my rebellious little brother. Beautiful. Hey, inflation's falling though. Fifty percent. Yeah, growth might have been better, but we'll see. Your tanks are too heavy for this. I might just leave it. Uh, you guys up here, maybe. Like that. Interesting. Hmm. Happy June. guys next only the most loyal collaborators after a victory over the hated Norwegians collaborators of old have come crawling out of the woodwork in support of a return some of them have the humility to plead for forgiveness for the treachery other more brazen ones have the gall to claim that they've remained loyal to the Reich since the disillusion of Norwegian these fools seem to think that we've not watched the more Norwegian situation with a close eye ever since then of course we haven't no, with all the action we've been having back in the Reich, but that does not mean we should tell the truth. After all, it'll only look bad for the Reich to admit that it hasn't been paying attention to its rightful lands. Instead, our Fuhrer has committed a brilliant, conceived con con a brilliant idea. We'll dole out punishments to all those we deem traitors, regardless of whether they actually betrayed us or not. After all, a good German should be able to sniff out the true Aryans from the pack of wolves and liars in the first place. At the end of this pur these purges, we should theoretically be left with a strong, sturdy, and loyal pack of politicians and generals to start the Reich's commissary out with. Yeah. After we kill these guys off, too. Less opportunities for loot the Balkans. Collaborators in high places, the German administration. North Sea Oil. With the reconquest of Norway, we've gained access to many natural resources lying inside of the mountains at first glance. This was seemed to be all that Norway offered the Reich, however. Upon some inspections, research, and preliminary drilling, our scientists and engineers have discovered a veritable ocean of black gold underneath the waves of the North Sea. These reserves, previously untapped, are vast, giving us the impression. Um, our impressive oil our reserves of our own to rival that of the Saudis and Italians. Not only will this new oil be enough to power a war machine for years, but likely enough to be surplus to even sell some overseas. Needless to say, the fear is ecstatic of the news and the extensive drilling has begun past track to begin. Or the tame bullet, Germany stands victorious once more. The costs? The costs are great. We've killed and dispersed the native warlords and the rebel men, but many German settlers have been killed, and many more that weren't 
uh, have lost everything. The German soldiers have died again to raise their flag over Moscow, but our work is not quite finished yet. We need to rebuild a semblance of government, one headed by someone a little less apathetic and much more involved than cash. For the general welfare of the state and the well-being of the German settlers, of course. And there they go. Congress of Serbia. Serbia, the little nation which caused endless trouble in the century, was finally reclaimed by the Wehrmacht in a recent military operation. Look at the parts of the Reich. When the Fatherland was on fire, our military administration in Serbia was shattered into pieces. Only through the wisdom and courage of the Fuhrer and his loyal soldiers can we save the Reich and retake the lands of Serbia from those despicable Slavs. It is said that if you wish to eliminate the chaos, you need to find the source of it, and history has shown us that the political situation in Serbia is a crux for all instability in the Balkans. If we can govern Serbia well, then we have a stable Balkan peninsula in our sphere, and if we cannot, then we need to face the endless rebellions and bloodsheds. The Reich's comments are out. Balkan Halbinsen, Halbinsel, led by General Leo Halp, will be tasked with the rule of those naughty Serbs. It will certainly make sure they know more, shall they dare to try to challenge our governance. Now, Serbia finally returns to our dominance, the whole world. Uh, white sailing to see what our next target will be, but everyone is certain that no one in the Balkans could stand against the German nation's wrath. The, hope, the power to gigs of Europe won't explode anytime soon. And here we go. Finish victory. Good job. Happy July, everybody. Where are we at? 0.69. It's cool. Railway guns are nice. There you go. Nice. Planning the return. that in a little bit. Let's see, oil is important. Offer them a choice. With the place, pieces in place, the Kriegsmarine off the coast, the armies of the Reich all around the borders, and the Luftwaffe primed and ready to fly. One can only feel a pang of sympathy and mutual feeling with the Finns, after all. They did aid us in the war against the Russians, and having uh, <clears throat> such fierce warriors, uh, and having such fierce fighters and Nordic men on our side would only be a plus. Besides, with such a show of force along the border, they must be shaking in their boots with fear. There's no need for any German lives to be wasted over a nation which has served us as our proud ally and can serve as our friend again. Our Fuhrer himself has ordered operations to be stalled, stalled for a short period, enough to give the Finns an ultimatum. Now they have a choice. Join the pact and cut off any relations with enemy powers, effectively becoming our ally again or be crushed under the German boot and become a Reichskommissar Yab. While the military center government, such as Shona, have lobbied for an immediate invasion, they've been muzzled for now. Now there's sounds in the north. We have bated our breath. All of Germany waits for the Finnish response. The Swiss guerrilla war ends. As after many skirmishes, raids, and acts of sabotage, it appears that the Swiss army's guerrilla campaign against their former homeland has come to a close. The German soldiers are walking down the streets without being fired upon. Supply trucks are furbishing garrisons, not being blown sky high, and a lack of assassinations of anybody above the rank of an Unteroffizier has been one of the uh, calmest weeks ever seen in the new German territory. This, of course, did not occur by random chance, of course. Many are declaring this apparent end of the Swiss guerrilla war a success. Many of the Oval Commandos say that it is their anti guerrilla training and adaptation that led to the end of the guerrillas, while many in the local administration over the new Swiss territories think that efforts of welcoming and accepting the Swiss into the Reich through integration has been the main cause either way. One thing is certain, a peace may now finally dawn on the Reich or, and on Switzerland. Another day for the Reich, of course. Very good. More fuel, please. Army requires a lot. A lot. The Navy requires a lot. Daily gains not very much, though. North Sea oil is good. 
Offer them a choice. So finishing that stuff up there. Army bases, prisons, and Berman. There, have a prison. Uh, hospitals. Such as in Württemberg. Ah, we have another ship done. Glorious. Power is very high, influence is medium, approval is medium. That's not good. Well, let's see what they say. Burn the golden fields. Now the war is finally over and everything in Ukraine rightfully belongs to us. Yes, we mean literally everything. As one of the most essential colonies in the German nation's Lebensraum, as native people must pay for their activities under Lebnat's rule, or Lebrant's rule. Our troopers will go to the villages, take all the valuable things to the fatherland, and burn their houses to the ground. All those who dare to resist will be executed immediately without any mercy. Aside from its economic effect, this relentless move is also some further value to us. For the natives, they'd hope for their freedom, but in the end, their dreams will only lead to such a painful outcome. Now the last ray of hope is going to be wither, and there are going to be nothing left except the endless elegies on the crane's golden fields. Uh, we're going to do that one, but we got to start thinking about this. Oh, rush to the landing point. No, well, if you don't need this, please go ahead. Blocker battalions. With their assaults under the finish lines, we have received a, a word of a strange, although an unexpected setback. It seems that the Russian mercenaries we have hired are simply too cowardly to charge into the guns of the bunkers. And have taken up the nasty habit of running away when the going gets rough, while it's make it be acceptable, acceptable for the average Slavic commander. It is well below par for our army. To counter this, we'll borrow an old tactic from the Russians themselves. The usage of blocker battalions, troops specifically for the purpose of stopping retreats, will undoubtedly give the weak willed natives more incentive to stand the attack, after all. Any reasonable man will take a chance of death at the hands of the Finns and a certain one at the hands of their own brothers in arms. Finland rolls over. Oh, look, I'll just do this. When the ultimatum was set, every single division bordering the Finns was placed in a high alert. Thousands of planes were primed and ready, boat after boat fueled and staffed, and hundreds of thousands of artillery pieces aimed, loaded and ready themselves for the conflict that seemed to be inevitable after all. The Finns had not surrendered to arguably worse odds back in 1939. Why would they surrender to the same odds today? Clearly war was inevitable, and so the armies of the Reich prepared. Evidently, the Finns did not see it the same way. Unbelievably, the Finns have done one thing we did not expect. They have given in, and now offer to join us with no questions or conditions. A stunned silence overtakes the Obel Commando, and permeates to the Führer's office. Of, out of all things expected of the Finns, surrendering was, to us was not one of them. Now there's an unfortunate problem in our hands. Though the Finns have, in all effect, joined us, the cost of readying for this war has been more some of the highest so far. Tens of thousands of men had to be retrained, thousands of tanks had to be re retrofitted, thousands of planes and ships brought back north. For this to have all been for nothing is unacceptable to the militarist branch who demand we invade anyway and take over directly. This demand is complicated by the fact that we promised multiple benefits for the Schoen rights that would be obtained from Finland's resources, lands, and riches, all of which are now un unobtainable. On the other hand, to invade a surrendering country would undoubtedly look horrific to the outside world and would eventually and severely hurt our odds on ever allying with anyone outside the wreck again. Welcome to the pact, brothers. Welcome back to the pact. Nice. Beautiful. That's actually really cool. The Finns have been beaten. We'll grant them another chance to surrender and spare the people of the hordes of war. If you want to about this, please go ahead. Towards Sweden. Another tank experiment. Towards Russia. Yeah. It costs more money, so we're going to do that one. Maybe. Uh, 1.4 billion. Mm. Well, I we have to go towards Russia because we did this one already, but we just bonus. Yeah. But the fin finish line had been laid low by the sword of the ham. Our gaze and its ire turned to a constant undying foe, the Russian bear. The Russians have watched our conquest with growing suspicion and worry and even now prepare the meager forces to defend themselves from our inevitable invasion. To counter this, we shall utilize a new territory to gain another angle of attack into the Russian heartland, positioning our crack troops and tanks in a way where they can do as much damage as they can. This way, the Russians will fall like a rotten house and inevitably knock at their doors. The Scandinavian liberation. Finally, after all the bloods, deaths, destructions, and mental sufferings we've endured, the whole Scandinavian Pepin is at our hands now. Once again, the Reich sends uh, the victor at the end of a war, and every other nation is now shocked and trembling before the Wehrmacht's awesome strength. Ne Denmark, Norway, Sweden. Under the leadership of our new Führer, we've unified more Aryan nations than we thought we did in the past last or last world war. Um, 
Though proud of the right though, our people and soldiers are indeed exhausted now, we'll have still have to do a local resistance. So before the new conquest, we should take some time instructing the Swedes, except adapting to the new national socialist lives, and giving our people some rest. Let's enjoy a hard one piece for now. Auschwitz pacified. After tying up resources and manpower for far too long, the Oba Commando has received reports from the local garrisons and the police forces in Auschwitz, home to a large population of Germans that talked of great success regarding the pacification efforts in the areas. Many industrial and top military officials have been extacted by the whole wide range of potential opened up as a result of this great triumph. Many businessmen have noted the higher willingness of the Swiss in the eastern regions to work with the German businesses, and investors that are moving in following the territorial acquisition. At the same time, recruitment busters in the Auschwitz have hit record highs, with the ports no noting some glimmer of enthusiasm for the new government. Although maybe about one region in Switzerland, this is a major breakthrough in the great effort to integrate the Swiss into the Glorious Reich. There's so much work ahead for the further pacification of Switzerland, so let's, let's be an encouraging glimpse of what can be hoped for a newer, brighter future for the Reich's territories. Welcome to the Reich! Send them home. Aryan Divisions. Let me get a dither and call peace. Andre stuffs his new belongings, or few belongings, into the box. The wave of refugees has reached his village this morning, desperately fleeing east, and he had every intention of joining them. It seems Pat took one last look around his home. He would likely never see this place again, no time for reminiscing, however. He opened the door. He was met with the butt of a rifle. He fell to the ground, blood streaming from his nose. The soldier that hit him looked now plus as he stepped into the house. Others followed, tossing furniture and searching for hidden riches he had never possessed. The man who struck him was conversing with them in German. Ev evidently, he was being beneath their notice, except to tear the box from his hands and toss the belongings onto the floor to be picked through. Still, they were unsatisfied. A kick to the stomach was all received as a squad exited to uh, search for the rest of the rest of the village. The officer seemed to be con contemplating whether he was worth shooting. The Ukrainian property is German loot. Planning the return. The British Isles. While well, Geo geographically separated from the rest of Europe, has remained a thorn in our side for decades. They have harassed us, assaulted us, and killed many innocent men and women of Germany. Now, they once again seek to undermine the fear's attempt and authority in an act and direct defiance of the Third Reich. How dare they? It seems that they have forgotten what German bombers bombed the cities and German boots stormed the beaches. It's still our duty to remind the English filth of their subservient position as our subject and will take any measures necessary to do so. Plans have been drawn out to partake in this next iteration as Operation Sea Line, the successful naval invasion of Great Britain many years ago. Many in German high command suggested that a direct and immediate invasion is the most effective means of defeating our enemy, however. Some suggested a more subtle approach, utilizing subversive elements and German sympathizers and Britain can more easily win us a war. While well, both methods could technically be implemented, time is of the essence and the fear of patience grows thinner every minute we wait, of course. Cool. Wow, I can't believe we actually did that. Nine percent versus nice. Look at that, nice. Perfect. Perfect. It means a reasonable resistance on the Isles, but it lacks leadership and direction to make it rather useless. With standing under agents under the Isles, we can change this. Fa Leibach. The town has come to infiltrate or initiate Fa Leibach. The infiltration of the government, institutions, and very society of the free English will not only secure us with the necessary intelligence, but also provide. Uh, the ability to inflict damage and inspire chaos wherever we so desire. Caution is paramount, however, we overstretch our admittedly limited resources, we'll inevitably be caught. Central Switzerland pacified. More exciting news has been reported the Oba Commando. The pacification programs in central Switzerland have finally been declared successful by the local authorities administering the effort. As German businesses and military recruiters flock to the new territories, we must please be witnessing the success seen in the efforts to soothe tensions between the Reich and its new Swiss citizens. This milestone shows that even the heart of what was once a nest of, of venomous, rabidly anti-German dogs can transform under the guidance of the Reich. As expected, the Reich can expect an influx of new Swiss recruits to join on the future efforts to project German influence not only in Europe but across the globe. With Baron now fairly under safely under the thumb of the Reich. Surely the rest of the Swiss people will make peace with their new leaders. Not even the heart of Switzerland can stand defiant. Yeah, it's getting better. 90% we're not quite there, but... 
Still. Oh. Hey, good job, guys. Hey, look at that. Beautiful. So we do this. It's going to hurt us a little bit. Oh. And it gives us a yearly deficit. Not good. Interesting. Well, I wanted to try it out again because we could. Oh, look at this. Look at all these chippies. find a way to cross the channel. Across the English Channel lurks a new independent state which has betrayed our trust and broken away from Lionheart's path. As people spit upon our flag while inviting exiles from Canada to return and preach their treason, they fail to estimate the swift recovery of the German war machine and this would cost them dearly. Time's come to launch a second invasion of England, as we did over two decades ago. The howling winds and ferocious waves did not stop us then and they won't stop us now. We can approach this invasion in two separate ways. If we plan to place all of our resources into an overwhelming naval invasion, we must also consider how to break through England's naval defenses and eliminate their land forces upon arrival. Many generals support this plan, others are condemned as a waste of lives and resources. Instead, they propose espionage and spycraft to topple the ruling English government. By doing so, we can defeat our foes while wasting very little resources. The success of an act would, of course, be completely up to the competency of the intelligence departments. Naval plan. Ocon is part of the naval branch. Naval branch for calculate, calculation of naval focus rewards. I'll try that one. Contact the holdouts. Those who have remained loyal to the Reich and the National Socialist Ideal will be rewarded for their devotion in due time. Or at least that's what we shall term that. Tell them now. For now, though, we must initiate contact with as many desperate collaborationist groups as well as German holdouts in Cornwall to utilize their zeal for our own aims. Keep them blind. Preparations must be made for the next stage of our infiltration plan. The information network of England must be completely and utterly crippled as soon as our invasion begins. With no knowledge of our troops' movements or aerial strikes, we'll be completely unprepared for eventual onslaught. To conquer the line, we must blind it first. A loyal fifth column. The various factions of the English resistance must become united as one mighty pillar of strength if we are to ensure that a conquered England remains under our boot. From those scared of German reprisal to fervent collaboration as fascists to remaining German holdouts, unification of these cells must be swift and efficient. Any untrustworthy resistance members shall be cut off from our parish precious aid. We shall support absolute loyalty and absolute loyalty only. Recognizing our friends, our preparations for the invasion of England have almost reached their fruition, and the time is coming to make some contact with local dissidents to weaken the new English regime. This is not as easy as it sounds. We must determine who our newfound ally shall be. Many German files and national socialists within England seek our assistance and desire to rule over a puppet state. Under the obvious choice for an alliance, however, many argue that there is not enough far-right resistance to provide any modicum of threat to the current English government. Um, and we must broaden our reach. If we were to embrace those who oppose the current government while all opposing the German Reich, it may bolster the ranks of resistance enough to turn the tide. They would, however, be a potential threat in the future. No, not all. We're not doing all the rebels. Can't afford to do that of resistance, now that the various resistance groups and cells have been united into one little block, which should begin sending the necessary resources. The liberals shall be encouraged to wreak as much havoc as possible, no matter how brutal or widespread, while the actual damage is likely to be minimal, such actions will not only distract the government, but affect severe psychological damage on the population at large, who will soon discover that defending their island will once again prove fruitless. Radio Blackout we must grant further aid to our loyal rebels in the form of an information and equipment. With the right tools, they should be able to cause a complete radio blackout throughout the entirety of England for two days at the very most. Where two days are all we need shall need to grab a proper foothold of the British Isles, and by then the English will have stand no chance. Bargain with the English. In recent days, our agents have successfully made contact with the resistance holdouts in England. Hoping to gain our help in overthrowing the new English regime, uh, they have re reciprocated our offers of aid. The largest cell in particular has sent us a message. Our two German allies and friends, as you already know, we are more than appreciative of the Reich's support. Uh, and we await the glorious return of, in which England returns to the Einheit's Pact. As soon as the traitors in Linder are overthrown, we will follow your cause. However, we are hindered by many problems. Our strength is lacking, and we need more manpower and equipment if we are to succeed. We have no doubt that the Reich is capable of bolstering our power. But this message has caused fierce debate among the general staff and cabinet. Several of our officers claim that Himmler's victory has proven the untrustworthiness of the Anglo, while Otto Maximin, uh, Axman and the Reich's Minister for Foreign Affairs have argued that the rebels have proven their loyalty to the Reich for over two decades by supporting collaboration. 
Go ahead. Roman D and Tessino Pacify. The Oval Commando has reported what looks to be the greatest breakthrough yet seen in the Reich's Swiss pacification efforts. The populations in the regions of Romandie and Tessino have officially been declared to be pacified following persistent endeavors to bring them under the total authority of Germania. The atmosphere of these regimes or regions appear to have been successfully tranquilized, allowing new German industries to flourish. To the shock of many military experts, even some of the French and Italian residents appear to show some interest in joining the Reich's armed forces. Wow! Those grand display shows a great potential. Um, in the seat of the Reich's future, for even the most stubborn populations cannot hold out against the will of Ein Volk, Ein Reich, Ein Führer. Let Switzerland be an example for the rest to behold, an example of how the strongest of force, the toughest of resolves, and the most determined of institutions all fail before the power of the Reich. Beautiful. That's going to be going to be bad. It's not very much more money, but still. But they have permanent uh, so weekly stability going up, so. Nice. Keep them blind. Ready of the Kriegsmarine, there was once a time where Germans stood in all the might of the British fleet. You question the authority the British had over the waves, and yet through Germany's ingenuity and determination, we've been able to supersede naval Britain as a global naval power. It is once again, of course, for our glorious ships to ride out into battle on the high seas, our mighty battleships shall evoke fear within the hearts of all British sailors as our submarines look below the waves to deliver the finishing blow. This time, we shall show Britannia who truly rules the waves. Send out the wolves. It seems as if the cowardly British have sent various diplomatic envoys to other nations in an attempt to receive aid in military supplies. We must not allow this to take place, or at least a squadron of U-boats shall be sent out to destroy their merchant convoys using our notorious wolfback submarine attacks to sink any who oppose us so that our foes feel the full wrath of our wolves fighting on the beaches. During the first Operation Sea Lion, our men fought with great distinction to claim the shores of the English Channel. It was a grueling fight, and the men died by the scores that claimed the beachheads that allowed us to push further into the English mainland step by bloody step. Oh, there's a little bit of lag. The amphibious assault uh, was so brutal that an entire division was broken up upon uh, the White Cliffs of Dover. We cannot allow such an attritional slog to occur in our plan of invasion for the city line, too. We have neither the time nor the will, the truth be told. England is not worth breaking the Reich over, which is why we must fight smarter, not harder. We'll fight them on the beaches and in the streets, and we'll force them to surrender. Convoy Escort Doctrine, the trip across the channel, while not a particularly lengthy one. These are troop convoys especially susceptible to aerial bombardment from above. In order to help prevent an enemy attack, a submarine escort along with several other anti-aircraft weapons shall be dispatched along our front, our troop convoys, in order to ensure their safety. We must do everything in our power to prevent an unexpected attack from our enemy, or else this invasion will be much shorter than expected. Oh, a little bit of lag. Oh, Scotland dead already? Or is it Boers? Oh. Oh, yep, Orenborg. Orenborg. Orenburg is one. Holy crap. That's kind of insane to see and think about. Full steam ahead. As you can com complete the rewards of this foci, increase as you complete more foci of the branch in the tree, up to a maximum of four. Still and steady. Full steam ahead. Load the transports. Um, you know what? If you want to do this one, please go ahead and load the transports. If you want to do this one, I'm going to do full steam ahead. To hell with our carefully drawn up plans and invasions. Our time to strike is now. The Wehrmacht is eager to storm the beaches of England once again, destroying all who dare resist the might of the German war machine. This won't be a mere war, but rather a complete and utter annihilation of the fools in London who deem it wise to fight uh, the glorious might of Germany onwards. Bombs over Big Ben. The invasion has begun. Goring shall hold a powerful speech about the amicable motivations for the invasion of England by the German Reich. Not only to rile the German people, but to persuade the English that they must accept their inevitable defeat. All the while, our jet bombers are being utilized to annihilate all the resistance in the city of London. Victory is close, and the second surrender. Britain is ours, or will be ours. The cowardly British people have once again fallen under the swift boot of Germany and have surrendered their capital and munitions to superior German forces. Just as the original Operation Sea Line. 
Was the resounding success of forces today swiftly defeated, or will defeat our Anglo foe once again? Did it mark the glorious victory for all of the Reich as German swastikas proudly wave all across the rooftops of much of, uh, of England and German men and women sir, uh, back home flood the streets to celebrate our victory? Give me a second here. With the military occupation of the British homeland, we've begun instrumental steps in asserting our authority over the greater uh, British peripheries. Soon, not only England, but the rest of the British Isles shall bend the knee to the indomitable German spirit, Deutschland über alles. Well, we've done it once again. We've landed under the shores of England. Now, this time we're not invading Dover, just north of Dover, as we're spreading out as we watch, uh... Well... England take a fat smack to the face. All around them, all the time. Uh, I guess we could throw everybody here if we really wanted to. It doesn't really matter to me too much. We definitely are trying to beat the schnackies out of us, though. We'll give them that. Well, happy March, everybody. We got a lot of political power. We probably want to start using some of that stuff, don't we? We could also build up more infrastructure. Gives us slightly, slightly, slightly more GDP growth. I didn't realize. Um, conquer England? Yeah. Should have done that before, but oh well. Here we are. Fall of London. Beautiful. As we go towards Russia. Extend the Osval. With the out forces at the gates of central Russia now, it is only prudent that we expand our fortification lines to cover the new northern sections of our border. Preliminary reports show that a Russian attack may be launched at us if hostilities are declared, in the hopes of knock us off our guard. This cannot be allowed to occur. And no Russian can be allowed to sneak through our lines by bunkering down and holding our ground. We shall shatter these waves like rocks and push forward into the bloody tide, hacking and shooting our way through anything. Of course, the Slavs are no real threat to a good German, but one can never be too prepared. Expand the northern mines. The most valuable hope that Sweden can provide for the Reich is the, its abundant metal materials. In the north of Sweden, there are dozens of metal mines that used to be owned by Swedish state enterprises, and the failure in the war has proven that it would be a waste to allow them to continue to control the mines themselves. Oh god. Oh whoa. Okay, awesome. Therefore, Germania has ordered that all mines in northern Sweden be nationalized by the Reich immediately and be expanded to fulfill all their potential. As for the workers, those duplicitous. Um or despicable people like resistance members, non-Aryan immigrants, political prisoners and resistance members are going to be used as cheap slave labor as usual. Now the whole world is trembling as the Swedish iron sh starts to serve the Reich's war machine. Beautiful. And now we found the real British military. Oh yeah, we're just hopefully decimating them. And bombing their buildings too. We're actually using some strap bombers as well. Nice. Muscovine. Might as well do that. I mean, you nothing else to do with it, so. It's kind of disappointed that the Scottish cannot push any harder in here. It's weird. I think they'd be able to, maybe. Carl. Nice, we got two of those going. We got carrier, battleship, cruiser, cruiser, cruiser. Nice. They're all stuck. That's what they are. Stuck. Hey. Africana of their front, huh? Very nice. Of course, we have no fuel. Whatever. Never shot this before. Of course, I think there is one. Well, the prospect of brand new German carriers is tempting enough. The fact that the remains of the Kriegsmarine, indeed Germany as a whole, is woefully under-experienced with the tactics and strategy needed to use an aircraft carrier. If we want to try to switch to a Navy based around aircraft carriers, we'll be needlessly outclassed by both America and Japan, who have both a head start on the carriers and experience. Instead, the fear is to take a sensible option. The Kriegsmarine, instead of throwing money into the pit of the full fleet retrofit, Shall save the course of the fleet in being. Instead, our fleet shall renovate our battleships into the modern age, adding the improvements of the modern age to our behemoths. If Americans and Japanese think that the age of the battleship is past, they are in for a real surprise. We shall make our battleships enter the envy of the world as they once were. Once again, the battleship shall rule the seas, and those weaker than us will tremble in despair as their pitiful collections of cruisers and carriers shatter under the might of our cannons. 
I like big guns. And out of sight. In the northern part of Sweden, our slave camps are silently expanding while more and more slaves are transported there to work for the Reich. However, everything about the enslavement will be kept as our top secret. The Swedes may be our brothers, but they have yet to see the benefits of our practices. Hence, the kinship and mutual respect between Germany and Sweden shall be emphasized in our propaganda while the slave camps will be expanded faster and silently. Anyone who leaks anything about slavery will face great consequences for their careless behavior. If you cannot keep your mouth shut tightly, fine then. Why don't you go to camp in person and serve the Reich more devoutly and carefully? The snake keeps eating. With the nightmare that African colonies realized as we lost coherent connection following the collapse of 63 and ensuing escalations, it has become clearer than ever that the situation in Africa was a total and complete mess. No. With SS madmen, glorified monuments to corruption, and whatever in that fresh hell Mueller was trying to do, few could have imagined the situation in Hutig's hellscape of a colony, of course. While the outcomes of total chaos having been concluded, and the traitorous uh, uh, Hutig's men have been long since been dealt with accordingly, it's clear that the proper administration has become a true necessity. Since the SS men have been given the hero's treatment, or hushed into irrelevance, it's clear that the local situation is stabilized, though it is in a sorry state in contrast to Mueller's corporate paradise. Therefore, a new administration has proven itself necessary, not one by run by not one run by war criminals, but trapped in the jungle. Leo Petolin, a former administrator of the Belgian administration, has been decided to be best fit for the job. Relentless, loyal, capable, alive. It is these traits that place Petolin leagues above many of our alternatives, while and he seems to be more willing more than willing to do so. While this is technically nothing more than another overseas proxy conflict in theory, this represents much more than simply another War One. This represents the Unites Pact's second entrance to the, to the Dark Continent. If nothing else represents a return to the world stage, this is certainly it. Perhaps this is far from the end of our empire within Africa. A second first step. Oh, look at that. The snake keeps on eating. Hey, if you want to do that, please go ahead. Congress of England. Today, though, when the Londoners walk out, they notice that the old flag over Buckingham Palace was gone, replaced by a familiar flag of the German Reich. Along the Thames, spots of rain kept uh, splattering on the pavement, and the only sound can be heard in the, uh, the sound of German patrols, footsteps, and the voice from Big Ben. In the streets, broadcasters announcing that the old regime is no more, were replaced by the Militaire Commandant von Britannien, established by the Reich director, directly. Though most people have been familiar with the changes in the regime in recent decades, the atmosphere in the city is still odd, since it is the first time in a thousand years that England is ruled, both in name and fact, by a foreign power from their homeland. In some remote bars, people gather to drink for everything in their memories and sing God Save the King together for the last time in their lives. From now on, the history of England will walk into a new chapter. While the whole thing England remains silent and melancholy, the Downing Street, now headquarters of German occupation forces, is now overwhelmed by cheers and delights and the last of victory. The second operation of Sea Line is seen as the greatest victory after the German Civil War and a great proof of the Wehrmacht's power. Now the officers are holding the celebration party to welcome the arrival of the new leader and the commandant they're waiting for. And they're waiting for General Franz Halde. And a little bit more lack, because why not? And I apologize for taking extra long for War Plan A, but it is what it is, you know. Welcome back. No stability, but that's pretty normal. Doom freeze. Yes, please. I'm gonna take out the Greeks. Maybe, I don't know. See you when we get there, I guess. Ooh, oh, we have a yearly supply. Oh, temp tax cut. That's why. Hurting our GDP. At least we get a surplus, though. I guess. As we modernize the fleet. Fantastic. Very good. Loot the vaults. Germany once grew pros through the conquest of our enemies and sh shall do once again. The English showman summoned a collection of great material wealth, something that would be of great use in the fuel in the German war machine. We'll order our men to loot everything in sight, ordering them to bring these spoils of war back to Germany to better our fatherland and leave no corner untouched. Back to the mills. Well, much of England's material wealth has already been sufficiently ex exported to the mainland. It appears there's only one commodity which we are always in need of, steel, and in so. To order our army to this issue, the men and women of Britain shall be put to work within these steel mills in order to produce a fine steel for German arms. This way, the British economy can still be rebuilt while the proud people of Germany can benefit from British steel. But happy May. The helicopter had been fired on as it drifted lazily over the burned and bombed out London suburbs, as low as it was to allow its passengers to survive the totality of the destruction. The shot, Raymond noted, had come while they were over our neighborhood in the 
East M. He made a mental note to have that block liquidated. Even a pot shot at a German officer and the general, no less, could not be tolerated. Any sign of weakness he knew was as, as a scowl formed on his lips would only embolden the urchins into a greater acts of barbarity. A few hours later, as he sat with one within one of the last undamaged government buildings, Raymer wondered how long the resistance would last this time around. To be sure, the English had been beaten even worse than during the first sea line operation. But now they had dispensed with had dispensed with the need for a civilian puppet. Even the former collaborators would be unwilling to serve their masters now, and what of it? The thought asserted itself in his mind. They had proven themselves as a little better than subhumans, unwilling to bend to those who were their superiors in every way. The conquest of England had heralded the end of the continental war in the Second World War, the high watermark of German military triumph. At that point, it was better for the wary Reich to let England continue existing. Was it? As annoying as it also improved, though. This time, though, this time England was just the beginning, and then, instead of the goal, it was merely a stepping stone to fear the victory. End seek. The word felt warm and glorious in his mind. England would have his own part to play in that end seek, whatever, whether it wanted it or not. The British Isle was turned into one giant floating base, the thought made Raymer smile. It was hardly man for revelries, but the general found himself singing quietly, Den wir fahren, den wir fahren, den wir fahren gegen Amerika. Jo oranges and lemons. Dispose of the rabble. It seems as if the various insurgents and revolutionaries of Britain are not satisfied by our conquest of the Isles. Apparently, they expect us to actually follow through with our promise of an independent England and restoring it to pre war state. Frankly, it was their fault for believing in such preposterous notions. It's time to put these rebellious traitors back in their place. And a swish of Swasco over window, window, Windsor. Britain's all conquered once again. The treacherous royal family and this puppet hurrah. Uh, victory is ours. The blood, sweat, and tears of the German people shall no longer be in vain. The government has always has been swiftly dealt with, with several members of the royal family being executed for their intolerable crimes against the Reich. No longer will the traitorous British people be allowed to control be allowed control over their own lands. From this day forward, the proud and honorable Militia of Avaltung of Britannien shall be established in order to prevent further disloyalty against the German Reich. As it should happen. Eight billion, huh? Balkans? Okay. Dispose the rabble. And... Uh, out of sight, of course. Airing divisions versus this one. I like more stability, but we're going to go airing divisions. While the Swedish army no longer exists now, the soldiers are still waiting for the final or destinies. And since they are viewed as the racial brothers in the National Socialist Theory, how to deal with them is not only about regional stability, but also about our long-term ethnic and propaganda policies. Due to the fact that the Reich has always needed more manpower to surpass local guerrillas and conquer more lands, those Swedish soldiers will be reorganized into new divisions under the, our commands, just like the Norwegians before. Some may argue that these Swedes will not be willing to fight for our cause and conscription will make them more hostile to our new administration, but our carrots and sticks can make them obedient, can't they? The fates of the gen uh, English generals in prison. England has fallen once more, of course. Those who raised arms against us fought bravely but in vain. Many English army men and officers fought to the last, killed on the battlefield or in private by themselves. Those have been taken into custody by the Heer, awaiting our judgment, of course. The easy and simple solution is, of course, to execute the surviving officers and generals, and wash your hands of the entire affair. Of course, that would mean exterminating a group of men that, in all honesty, are quite skilled and talented. Look at this. Okay, way more surplus. A sizable portion of our administration, including men and officers who fought against the British, are petitioning and asking to grant the captured men leniency. Their arguments are that the British were only following orders and fought her honorably. Besides the appeal to Athos, they also argued that a number of these men, if they swear allegiance to us, would be very useful in setting up a new collaboration and regime. The final two is, however, is up to the Fuhrer. Their lives are ultimately forfeit and in his hands. No mercy to those who stand against us. No, I don't want to decrease the loyalty. These officers are no good to us dead. Have them swear close to us? Eh. Meh. Oh, we're going to go to war with uh, Irish, eh? Which makes sense. Case Serdic. Our custody of England was doomed to fail while the rest of Britain was outside of grasp. The Scottish allowed rebels to flow both ways to the border, and the Welsh sent their coal but did little more than ask for help. Ireland is a whole different kettle of fish. We may have helped them again Ulster, but former Northern Ireland is a den of terrorists and English exiles. We must root them out once and for all. Got off the dragon's tail. Wales owes us something of an afterthought in the post war planning, and that's why they sat detached. Uh, from England and the right constrained middle ground, sending the coal and not doing much else. If they continue to be left alone, however, they will become a rebel haven, an ugly spot on the map. And instruct the OKW to draw plans for an invasion. Infiltrate Scotland. Um, the Scots have been paranoid about German infiltrators on the highest and lowest levels ever seen since their forced separation, and ironically enough, though it hasn't been remotely true, but now we might as well send in the spies. Here's a jumping at Gallows Shadows should have softened them up. Now get ready to knock them down. 
incite Irish tensions. Ireland was eager enough to jump on the British at the end of the last war, but like all the others, they came running for our help when the invasion of Ulster stumbled. Two hundred years later, not much has changed. The Ulster men continue to resist their southern, their southern brethren, and the Republic asks for our help. The Republic has proven a poor ally, unable to properly integrate the province they fought so much for. Ulster's pro-British militias will never willingly ally with the Reich, but they can easily be fooled to bring about its goals. False flag bombings on both sides of the border will set them against one another. Ready for us to return and clean up the mess. Beautiful. Conquer the Isles. England's always adds the main challenge of Britain. Now that speed bumps have been overcome, we can deal with the scraps. The remaining nations of the Isles will likely band together if we gave them the chance. Better we declare war on all of them at once to rob them of their advantage in the new Union eventually. The British Isles have been unified for the first time, reunited for the first time since 1921. Not many would have predicted it would occur this way, but not many would have predicted most of, us would, most of the events of the century. The British will have to get used to the new situation and their new way of living. They should feel privileged. They, most have, they have it better than most. But I'm going to end the episode there. If you enjoyed the video, though, please consider leaving a like or reno. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. Let's see what else we can do with Goring and finish off War Plan A. Thanks for watching. Have a tremendous rest of your day.